Oh, uh, you're watching Never Free Radio. And now, Everfree Radio presents Stay Brony, my friends, with Dusty Cat. everybody welcome once again to the west coast san jose california with your host me dusty cat a little later we'll get screwball in the chat but there's one thing i do have to inform you of and it's a sad day because uh, our good friend raven has had to back out um she's not feeling well uh about a half an hour ago she did call me and said she w was really sorry that she had to uh that she had to uh just had to back out of the show tonight uh, and she will be on but she will be on at a later date um, I'm very sorry about that but but I wasn't gonna leave you hanging because Dusty doesn't leave his boys hanging so what did I do I called up my very good friend of the program mr. Mike the microphone hello Michael yes sir how you doing today I'm doing pretty good how about you I'm doing awesome I'm doing great, because I can talk to my good friend, Mike. Yay! Yay! I don't know how many people are like, I just heard you on Saturday. I don't want to hear you again. Well, the thing is, they, they heard you on Saturday talking about one thing. So, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about a lot of things. Between, you know, Pony and musics and more of the projects you got going on, uh, other than just the Christmas album, which is awesome. Uh, that uh, We'll see what's what's going on in your in your mind which is a scary, that, that's dark that is yeah that's voice. that's some dangerous ground it's, you're treading on there i, no, I don't recommend it it's squishy and moist it, and i swear to god please stop, <laughs> using... <laughs> stop using the word moist i hate that word please stop using it <laughs> i got you <laughs> oh my god. uh so we're gonna make this as good as we can because we will for you out there in live stream land uh michael so how do, how was your Black Friday? Because we both work retail. How do you do? Oh, are you trying to forget it? Um, <laughs> honestly, it wasn't bad at first. Mm -hmm. uh, I was working at a different store other than the GameStop I work at because they needed extra hands, and I was like, oh yeah, sure, why not? Which is a horrible decision on my part because I finished the track with Mando, right. slept for all of a half hour, and then I had to get up. I don't even know how I made it across town to that other store. I'm, I was fairly certain that I was going to like get struck by a car or something while biking over, <laughs> you know, sleep deprived and completely unaware of everything around me. Um, but I made it there in one piece, and it was fine at first, but then we started running out of stuff on our Black Friday list, uh -oh. and people started getting upset, mm -hmm. and people started complaining mm -hmm. and yelling mm -hmm. and saying, Why don't you have enough? And I was like, oh, God. Here we go. Here we go. And I had to work the floor. Oh. But, I mean, overall, it wasn't too bad. How about yourself? Um, same thing. Basically, we, our, our Black Friday was a week-long sale. Ooh. Oh, yeah. From weekend to weekend. It was awesome. In it that, I awesome. got a lot of sales, kind of thing. But oh. uh, yeah, there wasn't that much, you know, hemming and hawing. People were saying, "Why aren't tires on sale?" Well, that's because <laughs> you don't make a dime on tires in the first place. Yeah. So <laughs> we give you half off on mounting. Isn't that enough? So, yeah. Right. But, but other than that, we did. We got our tree up, so we got our beautiful tree over there, and we got the icicles hanging from the mantle behind me, all nice and LED. Tricolor, Rainbow Dash style. Oh my um, God! LED, yeah. LED, awesome. lights. LED, LED icicles, which go all six colors from top to bottom. That's actually really cool. Oh yeah, it's awesome. Caridwen brought those home, and I went really, and then he hung them, and I went, oh yeah. 
Oh, oh yeah, that's <laughs> yeah, awesome. it's, it, it, that's that's the thing with Christmas lights. It's always one of those things where it's like, really, mm -hmm. the the oh. Oh, that looks nice. Yeah, once they're up, they're awesome. I actually do want to decorate my house this year. I'm going to decorate my house this year. So, Mike, did you watch last week's episode? I did not. <gasps> I know, shame on me. Is that because you hate Trixie? Uh, no, no. I, uh, I'm i still in season two, episode six. <laughs> oh, man. I've been busy. I'm sorry. <sighs> It takes 20 minutes to watch an episode. I, no, no, it doesn't. It's going to take me at least five hours because I have to catch up. <sighs> oh, God. And I now got to like think about ever... season two. What are we going to talk about then? It's like, okay, we can uh, talk pony. No, like, I, know the, would... I, know the gist, I know the gist of the episode, so I can probably yeah. keep up a decent conversation. Yes. Well, anyway, uh, let's say, uh, well, how did you feel about, you know, Trixie coming back the way they used her? Is it was it a good way, or do you think that they could have written her just a little bit different? I thought it was pretty cool, <sighs> except for a couple of points. I, I didn't mind it. I certainly didn't mind uh, the way they brought her back. I especially loved that she had a bit more of a volatile attitude, even more so than usual, which was just I I, I liked that about her. Mm -hmm. uh, with that being said, I was a little bit disappointed in the lack of a direct clash. Because yeah. gener generally, when you say challenge, you ch we want to challenge somebody to a magical duel. You're like, oh yeah, this is gonna be cool. It's gonna be like magic fight. You're thinking like yeah. season two finale style right. stuff when you when you think of magic fights. And so everybody's getting all excited, and it's literally just magic tricks. And I'm like, oh, that's. I mean, it worked. Don't get mm -hmm. me wrong, it worked, and it was definitely funny the way she went about doing it. Yeah. But at the same time, it was just like, eh. kind of fell short. Uh, a little bit. I would. I would have liked to seen more of a, a back and forth at the second time, right? Yeah. Where you know, all of a sudden you got this great big storm behind Trixie, and it's awesome, and it's like same trick. Yep. Ugh, let's do something a little bit more. Oh, but, but it was still pretty good. I thought uh, M. A. Larson wrote it, so I was like, eh. oh, no, yeah. Don't get me wrong. The episode was absolutely fantastic. I at least from what I saw of it, what I understand about it, but. Again, there was just it was very minor things, little directional changes that could have been done mm -hmm. uh, to make it more on the epic side. But again, this is a kids' show, so right. absolutely only so much you can do. Um, tell me a bit about um, the process you and Mando went through for the Christmas album. I know oh, it was sort of a geez. it was sort of a crunch because all of a sudden the Creepers said, "I'm doing a Christmas album," and it's like we got to have it done in a week. Yeah, and uh, definitely, uh, even Monique was under stress about this. Because everybody involved was under a significant amount of stress just because it was one of those things where it's like, first off, N N Monique has never put out an album this quickly before. And mm -hmm. second, I have never had to work under that strict a deadline. Like, I've had some pretty harsh deadlines before, don't get me wrong, but I've never had to work under that strict a deadline. And so I'm sitting here stressing my head off because I get the song and then three days later I find out I have a deadline that's in, you know, four or five days. And I'm like, oh, how the hell am I going to do this? Because I have Black Friday coming up that I need to deal with. Mm -hmm. I have all this stuff at home. I have to get my classes ready. So I'm freaking out. And then Mando contacts me and he's like, look, we're going to work together on this. We're just going to sit down and we're going to get it done. And literally the moment we sat down and we got into a call, it was, what if we do this? What if we do this? What if we do this? For about 15 minutes, mm -hmm. we break, we do our thing, we reconvene in about an hour and a half, two hours, we do it again, continue doing that process. The song is done in, I think, a little over 24 hours. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely insane. Incredible. Incredible. And then I got to tell, like, I loved working with him because one of the things that, um, one of the things that I, I very rarely get from collabs is usually uh, in the past what it was, somebody had a completed beat mm -hmm. and then they'd come to me like, do you want to throw something on this? I'm like, okay, sure. that That's totally fine. With Mando, though, we started with like a very rough beat mm -hmm. that I could work off of. And then we built the beat around the lyrics I had created. And then I would create more lyrics based off the beat he had made. And they just built upon each other. And it was just very nice, very neatly done and it was beautiful. It really, really was. Very organic. Yeah. Way of doing it. That's, that's a good way to put it. Organic. Yeah. It's kind of cool because I, I took uh, Bronafide's uh, Scootaloo Jungle Drum song that he did mm -hmm. uh, last week and sort of threw, I had Caridwin help me with lyrics. He wrote them. But uh, it's sort of like, dude, I can't find I can't find the lyric structure in this. And like within 15 minutes, he said, here. I was like, what? And I looked at it and went, okay, yeah, 
that's exactly what I wanted to do. And it's like, cool. <laughs> so now he knows what I want. It's, it's got no yeah. point where we work together so much. It's like, dude, I want to throw in this, this, and this. He says, okay, done here. <laughs> yeah. No, no. And, and it's, it's great when you, when you have somebody like that, especially when you're working on collabs and you have somebody who is able to do that, where it becomes second nature and you know what each other wants and you're able to build upon each other mm -hmm. in such a way that you just create something amazing every single time because there's that chemistry there. Yeah. And that is one of the most important part of collabs is having chemistry with somebody. Yeah. It's fine if you have a certain skill set you can bring to the table, but ultimately what it comes down to is chemistry. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, and we uh, the, the Christmas CD, the Kreber Christmas CD is actually live you can download it now right yep and uh hard copies will be available soon um i'm not entirely sure when monique hasn't released a date for that but you can download it on uh i believe it's cdbaby.com cdbaby.com look up uh, creepers look up the creepers uh yep. cd baby and you'll be able to find it there um and so now that you've got that done and now you're working on your own album that you're yes. so excited about you're telling me Oh, I'm excited mostly because I've been saying I'd do this for over a year now, and uh, I am about four or five songs away from being done, finally. Awesome. Uh, and, so how many songs are going to be on this uh, epic EP? I believe, I believe, let me check really quick. My last count was somewhere between 20 and 22. It's so, going to be a comp, well, because it's going to be a compilation album. So let's see oh, here. okay. Yeah, it's it's not just going to be new stuff. It's going to be a compilation of my old stuff as well as a bunch of new stuff. So we have one. Oh, so it's sort of like uh, sort of like a poison put a collaboration together with two extra songs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, sort of like a greatest hits. Mike, the microphone's greatest hits plus seven. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 20, 22, 22 songs. That's awesome. That's gonna be cool. I'm I'm definitely 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 excited for it. Um, just today, uh, Cyril, after many months of procrastination, I love you, Cyril. If you're watching, um, after many months of procrastination, we finally finished the uh, the lyrical rewrite slash cover of Stuck in Time that we said we'd do. God only knows how long ago. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, I'm almost done with Rise Above, the track that I premiered at uh, EQLA. The the uh, vocals for that are almost done, and I posted up a teaser of that on a uh, tumblr which i'll grab for you later awesome the, uh, and yeah the uh cyril is working on something that i'm supposed to be working on too so now that he has that done maybe we can get done on that so, oh his, hey cyril his, yeah no his list of collabs is just con just continually growing and it's crazy yeah yeah well anybody can, anybody who can play the horn like that plus bass plus guitar plus you know growl is going to be in uh going to be high demand well, not only that, but he's also balancing uh, his work life, yep. and uh, no, he, he graduated. He doesn't have to balance school, lucky. Yeah, he graduated. <laughs> now he has to have a career. Yep. <laughs> sort of like me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I have a career? <laughs> when did that happen? <laughs> oh, God. Right, but, uh, right though? Jesus. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Um, Christmas album we talked about. The uh, Did you see the CMC? No, of course, we just talked about that. Uh, do you have any overview on the CMC episode from... Two weekends ago. I did not. No. No. Uh, all I know is that they're bab seed everywhere bab -seed and I had no idea. Everywhere. I was I was very confused. Yeah, and I, then, I was um, wondering because we got we got remix after remix after remix after remix after really cool remix after really cool remix and I'm going, Where's Mike? It's like Yeah, I'm not gonna hey. touch that one. Oh. I'm really not. I, <laughs> to be quite honest with you, I'm probably not gonna touch any song out of season three. Really? Yeah. I I don't get me wrong, I love remixes and I do love the music from the show, but I'm Probably just going to stick to making my own stuff. Yeah, it, it, you're about you're about at that point, huh? Well, I mean, just because like I I prefer making original tracks mm -hmm. as opposed to doing remixes. And I I mean, don't get me wrong, if I can pull inspiration from the show and make something themed off it, yeah, absolutely. But remixes have never really been much my thing, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's that's more up like uh, Silva Hounds Alley. Right, right. Uh, Which he made, he made a trap mix of Babsy, and I was like, are you kidding me? It's amazing. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, I want to jump to this. I, no, I thought, I thought he was joking. That's the yeah. funny part. I thought he was just making a clever joke, and I'm like, oh my god, he was serious. Yeah, he was serious. That's sort of like, I've got, I've got this freaking metal album I've been doing with Bronafide for almost a year now. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, I got three songs left, and it's like... Yeah, you're right there. You're in the home stretch. I'm like, in the home like, stretch, and then blockage like the, the brain goes 
just ah! I want to do this thing with the song and I can't finish it because it won't come out right and it's like ah! and I go away from it and I come back and go away from it and come back. And it's yeah. like I know he's he's like probably really PO'd at me by now because this thing should have been out by BronyCon and guess what? It's almost yeah. the next BronyCon. You know what? I I said I was like I'm, I'll have my album done by Everfree Northwest. Yeah, that'll be nope. No. I, and after that, I literally just said, you know what? I'm going to make a tentative goal. If I don't hit it, I don't hit it. But mm -hmm. I do want to try and have it done by the end of the year. So my goal for myself is to have this thing done by the end of the year. And I need to because at the rate, I've already started work on the album after that, which I'm, uh, I'm working on it with Mandy, actually. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, we're working on a uh, on a collaborative thing, and it's going to be an album plus about an 80 to 100 page graphic novel. Ooh. So, uh, yeah, very, it's, uh, it's all going to be themed. We have an entire story style thing written up for it. Mm -hmm. Um, and we're going to start thumbnailing it, uh, later this week and get it ready. And we're hoping to have it done by next year's BronyCon, which is a very, very loose goal to make. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, my loose goal on the metal album is, uh, uh Las Pegasus, which gives yeah. me two months. To finish it and i've only got three songs to do it's just my voice is the is the the defining factor because i've yeah. gotten to a point where i want to do the certain things in certain songs in the last couple of months my <laughs> voice just sort of let no no you, you know you've abused it too much this year dude <laughs> um, you know you know what when i was working with mando on the christmas song he said something very very beautiful and i and this this kind of put me at ease with yes. this with this song because uh, I had recorded it somewhere in the ballpark of about 50 times. Mm -hmm. uh, I had to record, I re-recorded, I re-recorded, I re-recorded because I wasn't satisfied with what I had made. Right. And I really, really wanted to make sure that it was perfect because I'm a perfectionist. And I know perfection is an unrealistic ideal, but mm -hmm. I wanted to try. And he stopped me probably about an hour before we had finally finished the track, maybe a little bit less. It was like an hour, 45 minutes or something like that. Mm -hmm. And he says to me, he says, I'm going to stop you here. You're done. And I'm like, no, I'm not. I need to do this. And he's like, no, listen to me. When I was working uh, with uh, one of the other guys on the album, he was my sound engineer and I was the performer and I was doing guitar stuff. Mm -hmm. And I kept getting frustrated because I kept screwing up minor things with the guitar. And I kept, you know, having to re-record it. And I kept saying, oh, no, let me redo it. Oh, no, let me redo that. And you know what he said to me? He said, no, stop. You're done. And, he, and I tried to protest. And he said, no, listen, your job as a performer is to do the best that you are able to do. And your job is to rock it and make it as great as you possibly can. My job as the sound engineer is to tell you, you did it. You killed it. You're done. Mm -hmm. So just as he did that for me, I'm going to tell you right now. Shut up. You nailed it. You're done. But I erased all the exactly, tracks. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. I did. And the three the three songs I was struggling with, I basically took all three folders and put them in the trash. Because uh, I, I just killed them. Because it's like, no, this isn't working. It's done. I can't make this sound right. And it's like... Pfft. Yeah, you, you get frustrated. I That's why I, I always make it a habit. I never delete my, uh, my attempts. Because if I can, I want to be able to go back and try and find them. Well, I'm hoping that once once this Christmas is over, my voice coach, who's doing, of course, she's singing. So she's one of the best sopranos in San Jose, so she's right. in demand at this time of year. Um, yeah. Is going to come over and help me get my voice where it needs to be for these three songs, and we'll get it finished. <laughs> so it's sort of like a you know I'm going to bring her over on the evenings. We're going to eat dinner. We're going to do nothing but music and get it done. So um, yeah, it's going to happen. I've already got I've already got the album art done. The album art is done. The album sleeve, the, the CD cover is all done and ready to go. <laughs> I mean, that's all printed yeah. and they're like, oh, it looks awesome, but I got nothing to put in it. Uh, yeah, didn't Atriel, didn't uh, didn't Atriel do that one? Yes, Atriel yep. did the cover for that. And I, re I remember you showed me that yeah. when you came to visit. Yes, it was awesome, and which was an awesome visit. By the way, yes, we need. Oh, speaking of which, yes. Mando's moving to San Jose. Yes, he is. So we all need to like. Have a day and just hang we out. We all need to live in a yellow submarine. Yes, we do. Oh my God! It's one of those things where I'm hoping I'm hoping that they will come over. We're gonna have them over for dinner, and then uh, hopefully they'll uh, they'll be uh, good friends and come over every now and then just for shits and giggles and and dinner. And that would be awesome. Just to just to greet them and welcome them to Phonyville, as it were. Um, and then uh, we'll all get together and do something like a snowboard or something. You snowboard? Uh, I tried, and then I accidentally plowed through a woman on her skis, and I've been afraid to do so ever since. Oh, well, I'm I'm a snowboarder extraordinaire. We can teach you. Not a problem. 
Cause, yeah, cause I, I, Andy wants to go play in the snow. I know that. Let, j- let's wait until uh, my eye is fixed. Let's wait until I have depth perception, huh? Uh, well, actually, we could go up to Sierra Tahoe because they have snow snow tubes. Yeah, I know that um, we can also go up to, there's a, uh, I believe it's Boreal. My dad gets free passes up there, Ooh, so I'll try this one day. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about it later. Um, let's see, where are we at? We had 25 minutes. So uh, we got, let's see, we talked Trixie, we talked CMC, we talked new album, we talked Christmas album. Uh, do, 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 do. Hey, here's one. We now know from Equestria LA that you did some awesome work. With Mr. William Anderson, tell us a little bit about that. How how was it working under you know with with him? How how'd that go down? I was scared out of my wits, to be <laughs> honest. With you. Um, I was straight up terrified. I mean, when I got the when Will called me and he's like, "Hey, you know, uh, I need a rapper for this track. I mean, would you be willing? And do you know anybody who could uh, who would be able to do something with you like that?" And I was thinking. Well, shoot. I mean, Ivy's going to be in town soon. And mm-hmm. he was at, he actually stayed with me for a few days. And I was like, well, shoot. Yeah, me and Ivy can do it. And so he sends us the lyrics to practice and whatnot. And um, I sent him my rough vocals and he would send it back. And he'd be like, um, try doing a little bit of this. Try doing a little bit of this. And so, of course, I'm sitting there at my computer just staring at my microphone like, oh, God, what if I screw <laughs> up? I mean, you're you're I'm, I was terrified of uh, of messing up. But uh, but after a little while, Ivy came over and we finally just uh, I finally let loose a little bit, just mm-hmm. tried to have fun with it and ended up having a great deal of fun with it. Then Ivy came over. We did the uh, rap vocals for that thing. And I sent it up to Will. Uh, Will sent it off to Disney Japan and they ended up loving it. Oh, awesome. Have, have you seen it? The final cut? No, because it has not aired yet. It's uh, it's for the new Pac-Man show coming out in 2013. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, so I, I mean, can't wait to see that. I I'm pretty ecstatic actually. I'm I'm very very excited. I'm I'm excited for you because when I heard you were doing that, I was like, oh man, my boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was I was actually uh, I was outside the panel room when he when he said he was doing that, and then somebody's just like, get your butt in here. He just said your name, and I'm like, oh god. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you you were the one who told I was me. the one who said it. You were the one who told me. Yes, yeah. I dragged you in there by your shirt. It's like ah, get in here, stop mingling. <laughs> you can be social later. Yes. You know? The spotlight. The spotlight is on you. <laughs> Which was uh, uh, speaking of Equestria LA, and I will say it now that the highlight for me from that whole convention was you killing it. In in the concert, you just nailed it. You nailed everything you wanted to do. It came up. The flow was fresh. The flow was in time, on beat. You were having a great time, and it, and it just like as soon as you were done, you could just see the cork of pressure just go. Yeah, and it was like it, it was it was the the joy that came out of you was like you know Twilight throwing a freaking spell. It was like it just a. And you turned to me and just went, oh, my God. And we just hugged for, like, a minute and a half. Yeah. And it was like, oh, it was awesome. That was a highlight of my entire convention. Well, I mean, and I meant every word I said up there because, like, I see so many. One of the hard parts about being well-known, especially in a community like this one, where just potential and talent is literally surrounding you no matter which way you turn. The hardest part about being in a position where people like me, Alex and Tumar is when you see somebody comment saying you are so amazing at what you do. I just, I don't know why I even bother trying to do what it is I do. Cause I mean, you guys are so good at it. We're not though. That's just it. It's hard because it's like, how do you know how far you're going to be able to go? If you don't try, if you don't put that foot forward, if you don't make the attempt. And I mean, to be honest with you, everything I've put out, I'm not happy with a lot of it. Not everything I've put out has been amazing, has been mm-hmm. perfect. None of it's been perfect, and none of it ever will be perfect. Nope. It never will. If you talk to more than half of the artists that are out there, whether they do music, whether they do uh, pencil, whether they do animation, they're never, ever satisfied with what they've well, done. Yeah. They'll put it well, out. Yeah. They'll put it out, but then they'll gain, they'll gain skill as mm-hmm. they're doing other things. They'll go back to something they did a year ago. I go back to the, the Trixie song I did over a year ago now, which was the first song I did, right? And, and I look at that going, oh, man, the mix stinks. 
oh man, listen to that. Oh, dude, oh, I need to take this down. I need to remix yeah. this or whatever. But no, I leave it up there because it's a point in time. It's a point in time of my career that that's as good as I could do at that point. Yeah. And then it just gets better and better and better. Until, yeah. of course, I did that song last week, which was just a joke. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> which which was, no, it was like, okay, I'm going to do a growly metal song. It's like, how am I going to do this? I have no idea. I've never done it before. So screw it. Let's do this. Yeah. <laughs> no, and, you, and, no, and you, you just wing it. You have fun with it. And honestly, that should be the goal when you're working on stuff is when you're having fun with it, that yeah. is when your best work is going to shine through. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, I, 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 liked a par, I liked a couple of pieces of the, the song that I did. I was a little bit behind the beat, but of course, because Bonafide is like, that's going off. Yeah. And it's like, oh, but it's like, it, it, it had such, you know, it was sort of like I, I was like three feet back from the microphone just screaming at it. And it's like, it's still clipping. Damn it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I know, I know exactly what you mean. <laughs> it's like, you're three foot back from the microphone. It's like, I can't turn it down anymore. Oh my God. No, that was me when I was working on, uh, actually beyond her tomb the very, mm -hmm. for the very first time, because this was before I learned about how bad the reverb in my room was. Mm -hmm. And so I didn't have any blankets up on my wall. And so like I have my sound down to 50 in my windows options. I have the gain turned all the way down. Mm -hmm. I'm a good foot and a half away from my mic. And I'm like, why the hell is it clipping? Yeah. You need to go steal some egg crates and, like, staple them to the wall. <laughs> exactly. No, exactly. No, like, right now I have, like, I think, let's see, there's one, two, three, four, five bedspreads stapled to my walls right now. Yep. That is what I have dampening the sound in here. And it works. Mm -hmm. It works. Yeah. I've got a huge bedroom that I do my thing in. So it's sort of like, okay, I can't do it in all the bedrooms. So I'm, I'm, I've, been looking, I've been looking to get, like, a bunch of uh, fold-up. I, I was going to get some 4 by 8 plywood. And then uh -huh. put hinges on it so that when I record, I can actually put make a sound booth, and then Ooh. put it in the garage when I'm not using it. Yeah. So um, like... yeah, no. One thing, one thing somebody actually uh, recommended to me was if you have your computer in a corner, you can just like set up a blanket around you in that corner mm -hmm. to keep the reverb at a minimum. I know uh, a buddy of mine; he actually just throws a blanket over his head, keeps it off his microphone, and that's how he records. Wow. And it <laughs> works. It works. If though. it works, that's... it works. Yeah, I mean, hey, if it, yeah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, it right? Broke, don't fix it, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, yeah, because I'm uh, like, and, and you and I, <laughs> we have a little project that we were gonna do. Yes, we we still need to do that. We still I need to do need to, that. I know Black. I know Black Griffin is excited about it too. Oh, Black Griffin's excited. I'm excited. And now that Mando's gonna be here. Oh my God, we should get Mando. I'll, in I'll be able to like you, me, and Mando could be in the same room. Oh my God! Yes, please. Yes, please. Oh, yes, yeah. please. Yeah. So as soon as he gets here, it's like and I know he wants to take a break, and he needs a break. Yeah. So he'll take a break. We'll get. We'll like calm down, get moved in. Everything's cool, and then then we'll take him aside and go, "Hey, dude, let's do that thing <laughs> at the place." No. We, we then, best of all, we can just listen. Mando Pony produces the track. Yes. There you go. God, this is gonna be a beautiful thing. Yes. And then there's another thing we were gonna do. Let's. Two snaps up in a Z formation. Ooh, look out. You remember? I don't remember. I'm oh, dumb. come on, dude. I'm dumb right now. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. I'll, I'll remind you after the show because I don't want to give it okay. away. No. I, I know half half my half my viewers now know exactly what I'm talking about, but... Uh, yes. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit on the dumb side right now. I know. It's, it's the Christmas season and we both work in retail. Yeah, I think that's the truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, a little sip of, sip of juice. Um, half an hour into it, it's time for the commercial break. So that's what we're gonna do. Commercial break. Right. Uh, do, 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 let me pick one. Pick one. Pick one. Da, 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 da. We'll go with this one. We haven't played that one in a while. So, everybody, uh, we're gonna go to commercial, and we'll be right back with Mr. Mike, the microphone, who will sit here and take all of your questions. And we'll get Screwball in the chat. So, don't go nowhere. We'll be right back. Okay, thinking. Screw it. Okay, for some reason the commercials don't want to play. Don't ask me why. Must be live stream because they're sitting there in, in, in the where they're supposed to be. But they're not playing. So, uh, we're, we're going to do it live. Be, it we, might be an offline autopilot queue. Might be. Mm-hmm. Probably. You know what? We're going to do it live. 
You know who? You know who's the main sponsor of this particular program? Mm. We love fine dot com. That's right. I, I can dig it. T shirts, t shirts, t shirts, and bags and posters and all of that stuff. And they just put up the the the, the really cool Zakora that Heza made. Oh, you gotta go check it out. So, but if you go there, you can get the t shirt for this very program from we love fine dot com. And if you use EFR10, you can still use EFR10 to get 10% off your entire order there at WeLoveFind.com. They don't have this shirt anymore. This one, which is the Rainbow Dash Led Zeppelin, beautiful t-shirt. But, you know, they got lots of other stuff. So, that's where you need to go if you need any pony. And we're back with Mr. Mike. And don't ask me why the damn thing wouldn't play, because I have no idea. So, you know, I'm, you're so much better at this live streaming than I am. I need to take, I need to take lessons. Yeah, no, no, I'll, I'll show you what you need to do afterwards. Yes, I need lessons from Mr. Microphone, I'm telling you. So, screwy! Where are you, buddy? Yeah. Oh, there he is. Right here. Okay. Cool. <laughs> so, uh, so it, it wasn't me. I didn't I didn't have anything to do with it this yes, time. Yes, you did. Okay, chewing, well, what did I do? You're chewing what on the Cat5 cable again. You know what? That... <sighs> no, I, I don't know what to say. You know what? It, 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 it was blue. I thought it was blueberries again, and I figured, you know what? I'm gonna go to. I'm gonna go get purple ones. You know they do come in all the oh, colors now. Grapes, then grapes, yummy. Yeah. <laughs> Screwy. <laughs> <sighs> so has See, has, I... has the has the chat um, effectively exploded? Like not exploded because uh, Raven isn't here. Uh yeah, I got tons of questions. Oh boy. Go Where on. do I begin? <laughs> do it. Uh, I'll go with... Uh, da, da. Oh, this is a simple one for you, Mike. Uh, this is from Imperius. <clears throat> Question for Mike. Favorite pony? I love all horses equally. There you go. Oh. But you, I, I like but, that But answer. you know, he said horses. <gasps> not ponies. Exactly. Oh. I only oh. discriminate. I only discriminate against the non-horse characters. There you go. So in other words, so in other words, the king and queen of Saddle Arabia. No, no, they're love. fine. They're fine. Because they're the only horses. <laughs> I get to pick between two. Yes. And that's yep. good enough for me. There you go. <laughs> no, no, no. But it, honestly, if I have to choose, uh, rarity. Mm-hmm. Rarity. Yep. Awesome. Yep. Ah. Uh... Oh, so this one is from Wub and Tolerate. Uh, I don't think you remember, but you were the one that said those in inspirational words to me at ETLA during the musicians panel. I have to say thank you so much for saying those words. It has touched me a lot. Well, and is this... <laughs> yeah, the and uh, but the question he likes to ask is, what do you do to keep yourself going on? Uh, going on your music and raps, and what gave you the idea of starting it? To be honest with you, the what keeps me going is the knowledge that even if I do screw up, I'll get better. Because the thing about it is that if you want to get it, and this is my favorite quote from a cartoon that I will ever hear, and it's Eddie from Ed, Ed and Eddie, and the quote is, if you want to get it right, you got to get it wrong. Nobody gets something right 100% of the time on their first try. If you want to get good at something, you have to acknowledge that you're going to fail a few times. You're going to fall down and you have to stand back up. And if you want to get better at it, you're going to have to realize you're going to fail a few times. Mm -hmm. And I'm fine with that. I mean, early on, I was so concerned with trying to, because I'll tell you what, it's, it's still intimidating being surrounded by people who have just the most insane amounts of talent I have ever seen. I mean, you have Alex who will be sitting there playing games with one another and then Alex will just pop off for like five and a half hours and we'll be like, where'd you go? And he's like, oh yeah, I was just finishing a song. And it's like he, we, the, the rate at which he's able to pump out just amazing music baffles me. And mm -hmm. it's very, very intimidating. His, his level of skill and the knowledge that he has is equally intimidating. I mean, I am still amateur when it comes to original compositions. I mean, yeah, I can hold a tune fairly well, and I'm decent at rap, but to have these people who who sing, who produce, who do everything under the goddamn sun, I'm sitting here just like, oh, jeez, how am I going to match up to that? But, 
at the end of the day, you need to stop comparing yourself because everybody's going to be good at something mm -hmm. and everybody's going to be bad at something. Mm -hmm. People have a limitless pool of potential at their disposal. They just don't even realize it. You can do what you want to do. You just need to realize that you are going to have to work a little bit for it. And All as long right. as you put your, well, yeah. And as long as you put your mind to it, there's not a, I'm sorry, I'm going to stop saying that. There's not a thing that you are unable to do if you put your mind to it. You will be able to do anything. And I firmly, firmly believe that. Yep. Look at me, folks. So, I'm a 44-year-old biker guy, and you guys show up every Monday to watch me. <laughs> okay? How did that happen? <laughs> the, I don't know. The same, the, same, the same way I have, like, upwards of 10 to 30 people camping my stream. Yeah, and, and you're not even there. The, yeah, it's, it's like, I'm not there. You're watching an offline screen. <laughs> But, but I mean, anybody can do what I do. Mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's really... if, you, if you watch, if, if back in the day, VH1 used to do a behind the music, right? And yeah. I was watching that today because I love watching the old behind the music and how these bands got started and all that kind of stuff. And look at Metallica. Yeah. Right? Metallica was a bunch of guys who were fans of heavy metal music that got together and started playing. And look where they are. Yeah, they just wouldn't take no for an answer. They were going oh. to be the heaviest, hardest, fastest playing band. That, and they were going to take over the world. They wanted to take over the world, and guess what? It happened because they the, worked at it. That they sacrificed to get it because they did nothing else but. But and and if you if you want it, you can go get it. Just you have to want it. Another really really good example: Queen. Yeah, not every oh, Queen. Yeah. Queen has put out dozens upon dozens of songs that, let's face it, were not very good. No. I, I mean, but then you have songs like um, Bicycle Race, yep. Fat Bottom Girls, um, We Are the Champions. Champions. You have those songs. Yep. And they kept working through it. They put out dozens of songs that were really bad. Yeah, really bad. But they kept working at it. Mm -hmm. And even though they screwed up a few times, they kept working at it. Yep. And that's why people, like, I think that's part of the reason why everybody's like, wow, these guys are amazing, was because when they did get something, when they did get something that just hooked everybody, mm -hmm. they they knew it. They knew it. And that, and at that point, that's when the work, when all the effort, when all that falling down finally paid off. Yep. Next. And I mean, I mean, shoot, Matt, Matt, what was it? You, what song came on the radio that one time when you were going to work and you were late? Um... I'm trying to remember. I think it was it. It wasn't. We will. Ra no, Bohemian Rhapsody. Bohemian Rhapsody. Yeah. Yeah. Matt here is going to work. He's late for work, and he's sitting in his car at his job, listening to Bohemian Rhapsody. He walks in, and you're like, "What? Six minutes late?" Uh, yeah. I was just at the barely like the acceptable amount of time to be late. Yeah. And his boss is like, "Why were you late?" And he's like, "Oh, Bohemian Rhapsody came on." And boss is like, "Oh yeah, okay, that's fine." My boss actually <laughs> late and understood completely. There you go. Yeah. That song always always plays and works. Always plays and and I love that one. Probably yeah. out of all Queen songs, I love that one most. Yeah, no, Bohemian Rhapsody was amazing. Yep. <laughs> Go three. So this one is from Luminaire. A uh, question for Mike. Um, what's the best song that you uh, that you've been involved uh, that you've done or have been involved with, in your opinion? Is none of them an acceptable answer? No. Okay. No. I didn't think it's so. I want to know the uh, one you hate easy. the least. Okay. Um, geez. If I had to choose one, it'd be either Nightmare Night or this Christmas rap that I just did. Ooh, and the, and how the, could you the, hate Nightmare Night? No, 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 no. Oh. Which one he said? No, no the, the least. Yeah. Was, yeah, which one? Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm still, like, how could you hate that one at all? Okay, uh, the rhyme, like, honestly, the rapping for that one was straight up terrible. Bull. You know, Bull. it was, no, Bull. no, from a technical standpoint, that rap was terrible. That's why I rewrote the second verse and tried to perform it at EQLA. You know, you could say that the technical rapping in Baby Got Back stunk too, but guess what? It was a huge hit. It made him a lot of money. Yeah, that's true. 
I mean, just again, this is me being critical of myself. That's again why I rewrote the second verse. I should actually record that at some point. You should. But um, I rewrote the second verse specifically for that purpose. And then um, the Christmas rap was just again the songs that I that I dislike the least mm-hmm. are the ones that I had the most fun doing. And fun. so at yeah. that at that point, it's less about oh god, is this going to be good enough? And it's just you know what, I had fun with it. Whatever. That's it, man. You got yeah. to have the fun. Why do it if it's not fun? Exactly. The moment this becomes something that's unenjoyable is the moment you can't do it. Yep. Move on. Mm-hmm. Next. Take. Ah, oh, so this one's from. Sh- uh, Sh- I always hear your name wrong. You know, um, uh, Shikari Speeder. Uh, and he just likes to say, uh, Mike, thank you so much for auctioning the rare, uh, rare delicious poster at the auction at uh, Equestria LA. It, it meant a lot to me and to Kiki too. Everything we all do really makes a great difference to every pony. Uh, tell him as uh, as thanks for the auction, I shall create your OC poster as a thank you. No, 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 no. You you really don't have to do that. And I'm I just you really don't have to do that. And I say that because I wanted to I wanted to help Kiki. Everybody was giving stuff into the auction. Mm-hmm. And I figured, why not? Why not contribute back? Not only that, but I mean, Kiki's dad is just the nicest person I have ever met in my life. And if it's able to help him and his daughter through their cancer, their uh, their cancer situation, then hell, yeah, I'll do it. Oh, yeah. I'll do it. I'll do it in a heartbeat because honestly, it's people like that that give me the most joy in this world. Like seeing people like Kiki's dad. I mean, just honestly, one of the happiest, most kind men I've ever met in my life. He walked up to me after the auction, gave me a giant Twilight Licious wall scroll signed by uh, Tara with the certificate of authenticity. And I'm sitting here like, you really don't have to do that. He's like, no, thank you. This is for you. You can have it. And I'm just, I'm blown away by that man's generosity. I really, really am. Mm hmm. So if it if if it means I can give back, then hell yeah, I'll do it. That's awesome. So <laughs> thank you, but it's a reward in and of itself. I have to give that moment of silence. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, uh, so this one is from uh zyra pony lover. Uh question from Mike. Are you planning on making a Epic Pony Rap Battles of Equestria anytime soon? No. And I'll tell you why. Uh, I put that project on an extended hiatus because I want to focus on my other projects first. Um, One of my biggest things about that particular project was that I wasn't enjoying it. Uh, It was becoming a great source of stress for me because I didn't have anybody else I could work on it with. I didn't have somebody I could bounce lyrics off of. I didn't have anybody who was uh, free enough and able to help me with everything. So I felt a lot of pressure just kind of resting on my shoulders. And I got a lot of people asking about it. And so I put that on the back burner in favor of my album and the other musical projects I wanted to pursue because it was something that wasn't bringing me joy. But what I will say is that I have created a separate channel for the rap battles and they will be continuing soon because I've merged my project with a man by the name of Rikun. And Rikun actually uh, is almost done with one of his first rap battles, which I need to tell you is amazing. Uh, it's uh, the Zakora versus Iron Will rap battle, and that's all I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> and that will be going up actually on the channel in the next few days. So if you guys want to look that up, uh, the channel is uh, youtube.com slash user slash EP uh, Epic Pony Rap Battles of History, abbreviated. So EPR, Epic Pony, EPR. B O E. God, I'm terrible at that. Um, but you guys can look that up, and that will be going up very, very soon. It won't be animated, but it doesn't need doesn't animation. Need I'll tell you, it does not need animation. <laughs> it it is brilliant on its own. So you can look forward to that uh, very, very soon. Awesome. Awesome. So this one is from Pink Pearl Apple. Uh, question, Dusty. Uh, if if I was somehow able to make a bacon hat. Would you like it? <laughs> Would it be made out of real bacon? That's all I was wondering. I'm like, is there... Is, is it, it real bacon? bacon? <laughs> it can be kind of smelly by the time it got to me. No, yeah, no, no. You, like... have, you have to ask if it's going to be freshly cooked bacon or if it's going to be raw bacon, too. Yeah, that's, yeah. Uh, it's, a big... it's felt. It's oh, felt. felt bacon hat? Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. You make me a felt bacon hat, I would wear that in a heartbeat. Uh, I was kind of hoping for real bacon. I, I know you were. 
You'd probably lick it off my bald head, too. I would... I I did say I was going to polish your head, didn't I? Yeah, that's true. (laughs) I didn't think you were going to do it with your tongue. You'll you'll, you'll be attracting (laughs) cats for a week, Dusty. They'll just be floating around your house. Yeah, yeah, I can see it now. Oh... Well, that's borderline uh, so, inappropriate. I, it's yeah, borderline, okay. but not. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, so th- this one is from uh, Gavin Jap. Gavin Gap. Hi, I Gavin. Seen it. And I like uh, with that. And uh, the question is, Dusty, yes. if you're the person who taught Scootily how to mechanic, um, Shirley did ask me to help a little bit because Scootaloo was showing signs of mechanical aptitude in school. So, you know, it was one of those weekend things where, you know, I showed her the right end of the wrench as it were, you know, it's like to use on how to use things. And, and yeah, I gave her a couple lessons on, you know, how to fix stuff and it seems to have worked out. Yeah. I mean, they couldn't, they couldn't even fix a table last season. Now look what, look what they do. They can build a whole float overnight. Jeez. It's my, my fault. I did that. You know, you, you'd think that would be her cutie mark. Really. Mm-hmm. Like, if, if they can build that kind of mechanic, I can't even do something like that. I'm like, whoa. I actually really did think that was her cutie mark for a second with the whole wrench. <laughs> I'm like, she actually got it. Oh, it was. What, just... was, what was awesome is that William Anderson did the whole A-team background music. Well, it was going on, but not. It was really close. Oh, yeah. But it, it was, was like, so close. oh yeah, it was, it was awesome. amazing. <laughs> oh, Mike, when you get to it, you'll you'll it'll just blow up your mind. It will eventually. <laughs> eventually. Eventually. If I, if I'm not uh, drowning in procrastination and thoughts of oh god, why am I not working? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this one is from Screw Loose. Uh, Question for everyone. Is there anything that you are hoping to receive for Xmas or respective holiday? Um, I've gotten everything I could ever want this year. Between what, between the friends that I've made, between the music that I've made, between the places that I've gone, between uh, the help that I've gotten uh, over this year, I've gotten plenty. Um, I don't need anything else. Uh, and, and I'd rather give it back if I could. Not give things back, but give give back to other people. Give back uh, uh, the joy and the and the uh, help that I've gotten. So uh, I would rather do that. I'd love it if I'd have more time to work on things. Well, I can't do that. I really, I really. If you, <laughs> that's that's what you can give me for Christmas. You can give me time. Time you can won't g- give me time, cause time God. makes lovers feel like but they got all- what. Oh, nothing. I'm. I'm just saying. In all honesty, <laughs> you you started singing, and I and I I was about to, and I'm like, no, I'm gonna let him sing. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm enjoying. I'm enjoying this. Just go ahead. Yes. But um, <laughs> no. If there's anything I want, it's just I want Drive to finish my album, and I want to be able to see my family because I haven't seen my uh, full family in several years now. Ah. Uh, mostly because my brother. I don't even know what's going on with him anymore. My older sister doesn't talk to anybody. And uh, the rest of my family has just become really, really distant, which is sad because we used to spend Christmases together like every year. And now it's like we don't hear from anybody. Uh, let's hope that situation correctifies itself soon. I hope so. Mm-hmm. So this one is from SciPy. Uh Question is, what is everyone's overall impression uh, to the Creeper Christmas album? Side pie, we were just on Saturday Night Songs. Come on. We all know everybody <laughs> loves the album. Come yes. on, Keenan. What are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> I know it's you. I remember the name. <laughs> no, but uh, to be honest, I listened to it last night and I was... I was blown away. I was I was seriously blown away just by how amazing the entire album turned out and the fact that it was produced as quickly as it was. And yeah, just everything turned out absolutely amazing. So I was very, very pleased with how it came out. 
Although I do have to agree with Monique. Um, we were talking after the show and she was saying, you know, I really wish we could have put your song last, Mike, because if we had been able to do that, that would have been a perfect way to go out at the end where the kid's just like, yeah. so I'm still on the nice list, right? Yeah. <laughs> that would and I'm awesome. just like, oh, that would have been perfect. And she's perfect. like, I'm sorry. I'm like, it's fine. It's fine. Uh, I did. I did. Uh, I did two Christmas carols last year and uh, I, I want to do one again this year. But it's like I'm trying to figure out what to do because now everyone's doing Christmas carols. And it's like, oh, you did that one and you did that one. and you, Oh, man. Run on a Christmas carol. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, uh, when, well, when, uh, when uh, uh, Monique gave me the email that, hey, uh, uh, you're, uh, I need your email so I can send you the download links. And uh, my heart just instantly started racing. I'm like, oh my God, it's here. So then uh, I downloaded it, which felt like ages. And then I listened to it. And honestly, I really did feel like a kid again. Like the music, like most most Christmas music seems so repetitive, but, but there's just something about this album that just really brought out my inner child and i and then i'm just like wow it actually feels like christmas again because honestly for the past i don't know four or five years i never really had that feeling but when listening to this music and hearing hearing all you amazing artists sing and have an amazing time it, it really did blow my mind i really enjoyed it screw it's it. a creeper christmas screw it did you get your present um uh no <gasps> uh, but like not yet not yet not yet because well let's see the first i was i knew uh i knew my plushie was in the mail yeah and then i knew my i'm pretty sure that my uh my presence in the mail too but then uh i realized wait a minute the post office is you know closed on weekends mm -hmm. which I was flipping and yes. going crazy throughout the entire weekend. And I, then I asked my dad, hey, can you uh, by any chance pick this up for me? He forgot. Oh. <laughs> so now I, I have another day without a present and a plushie, and okay. it's driving me up the wall. Okay. Well, it's there. It's, it's So it, it's actually there? Yes, it should be there. I, I sent it like oh. four or five days ago, so it should be there. Okay. Next. <laughs> um, so, one second, I'm going to go to the next one. Um, oh, uh, this one's from uh, Nerfly. Uh, question is to Mike, how did your OC come to be? Oh, I love hate telling this story. Uh oh, I love hate telling this story. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, basically what happened was one day uh, I had no power in my house. My dad hadn't paid the internet bill and he was in Tennessee doing God only knows what. And uh, I asked him, I'm like, you know, have you, are you going to pay? And he's just like, oh, I'll pay when I get back. And I'm like, but I have schoolwork that needs to be done. The rest of the people in the house, because my aunt, uh, her boyfriend, and my cousin were all living here at the time as well. Um, he's just like, well, I'll take care of it when I get back. And I'm like, so you're, you're, you're screwing everything up for everybody else because it doesn't affect you in Tennessee. And I'm like, ah, dang it. So I sat down. I watched the entirety of season one on my phone using the 3G that I had. Uh and just ripped through that in a few hours. And then I started getting involved in like Steam groups and uh, the chat rooms on Steam and whatnot. And I was trying to think like, gee, what kind of alias could I have? Because at the time I was just calling myself Dinkelberg. <laughs> literally, was <laughs> literally was just calling myself Dinkelberg. And you know, thinking back on it, that I, I should have stuck with that. That would have been, that would have been cool. I no, it wouldn't just have. Yes, it I Yes, it would. No, it wouldn't. Yes, it would. Go to a convention, have everybody go, Dinkelberg. <laughs> no. Yes. Oh, no. No. But, um, no. We'll argue about that for a while. No. <laughs> but anyway, so I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking about, okay, so I want an OC. And so um, a friend of mine, Kyla, she designed a, uh, she designed an OC based off of a couple of other characters that I had. And I looked at it, I'm like, oh, this is actually a really nice design. And the original i still have the original picture of that oc and she's like okay well what do you want as the cutie mark and i'm like oh gee what am i good at well i do like screwing around with my voice and singing from time to time so let's go with a microphone with a pair of headphones around it and so we did that and only i wanted to actually give it a name and i'm sitting there like oh geez 
Oh, geez. It needs to be something clever and related to the cutie mark. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 headphone, phone, microphone, mic, uh, microphone, what? Mic, microphone, mic the, oh, mic the microphone. That sounds nice. Yeah. That's literally how it happened. And, uh, yeah. Here, here I am. Incoherent, just babbling to myself, and there it is. There you go. <laughs> Next. Ah, so this one is this one is from Fenicus Kitsune. Uh, question for Dusty and Mike: Are you folks still gonna do a duop album? That's what we were just talking about. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yes. yes. We are. Yes, yes we, we are. are. Yes, yes, we are. Please. Yes. We're, yes. We're waiting for I certain really things. Again. We're waiting for certain celestial bodies to align. We're 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 gonna get we're gonna get a yes. whole lot of male sync. We're gonna get Mando. We need yep. to get Black Griffin. Yep. We need to get a lot of people get, in. Yep. On, you know what? That's it. The four of us: Black Griffin, yep. Dusty, me, and Mando. We're gonna mm -hmm. make a doo-wop album. This is gonna yep. be good. It's gonna be awesome. It's I, I already. Good. You know what? I've already sent a telegraph to Luna to get the celestial bodies to line the hell up because it's been a while, and if she can't make it happen, I don't know who can. This is gonna happen. This it's gonna is gonna happen. Be, this so. is gonna be a thing. It's gonna happen. It's gonna be a thing. It's gonna make a doo wop yeah. out. Doo wop, doo wop, doo wop. Yay, yeah, yeah. Oh, that just remind me of do, Timeless do, by do, Michelle Creeper. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I can't. The sing. sultry you sweet guys make sound. So, <laughs> so this one is from. Get ready for a dusty. Mm -hmm. James, Justice! James Justice. <laughs> is he your resident uh, superhero of yours? Because yes. I like that name. I he really is our like resident him. superhero. That's actually his name. Too. Have no fear, <laughs> James Justice is here. <laughs> and uh, question for all: Is there a celebrity or a fictional character you want to see in MLP in the near future? Uh. Is it wrong of you that the first thing that popped into my head was Samuel L. Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> Is it bad that I want to see Samuel L. Jackson in My Little Pony? Snakes! Oh. Why are there snakes? Why are the mother bucking snakes on my mother bucking train? I Somebody can... get these mother bucking horses off this mother bucking train! There you go. <laughs> oh my god, please. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody at Hasbro make this happen, please. No, that ain't never gonna happen. <laughs> oh, I know it would never. They can't happen. get Stan Lee on the program, much less yeah. you know Weird Al Yankovic. You think they're gonna get Samuel L. Jackson? I don't know. He might do it. Oh, you know what? Now that I've said it, somebody needs to draw it. Yeah. Get on it, people. Oh my God! Yes. <laughs> oh. So. Oh, so this one is from Crazy Local Girl. Crazy Local. Uh, Girl, why are you acting so cray cray? <laughs> I had to. I'm sorry. That, uh, of that was that was an opportunity I was not about to let pass. I'm yeah. sorry. <laughs> so, question to everyone: Were you naughty or nice this year? Be honest. I'm, I played. I, I played devil's advocate. I, I, <laughs> devil's advocate, my butt. <laughs> God, I know you. Yeah, he was naughty. Yeah. Me, I, I I give it up. I was naughtier than heck, <laughs> you know, traipsing uh, around the country. It, it it depends on your perception of nice. True, true. I give it that. I, I mean, I I was playing Kirby Air Ride with my friend Kyle, and I did knock him off his warp star, and then continue to beat him around and beat up any warp star he jumped on. So I think that constitutes as naughty. Naughty, naughty. I I was not. I was, I am not a nice person in video games. I'm just not a nice person. Except for you, Dr. Zoidberg. You get a pogo stick. <laughs> yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I did kind of break the live stream the one time and accidentally broke the, the commercial yeah. today. Yeah. Uh, I guess I'm a naughty pony. <laughs> yeah. And you got yourself... I had to go rescue your butt from oh, Nightmare Moon. Too. Oh yeah, that that was that was quite the adventure. <laughs> Naughty. Why well, should they remind me? Now now there's all sorts of dark thoughts going through in my head about what I went through. I'm still grateful though that you saved me. Ah, you're welcome. 
<laughs> so this one is from Daring Do. Question for Mike. Who is your inspiration for your raps and music? Um, my mother, actually. Aww. And I'll tell you and I will tell you why. Um, my mother was actually the one who taught me to sing. She also taught me uh, very basic music things about rhythm and all that. And she used to let me listen to a lot of stuff growing up. Uh, my brother used to take me out skateboarding. And my very first introduction to rap was a Wu-Tang Clan cassette that he had. And so he'd be out skateboarding and I always, I'd always go around with him. And we had this uh, this dual cassette player boombox, which back in the early 90s, if you had one of those, whew, look out. Um, and so we were walking around with one of those. And I'm just singing along to the lyrics. I have no idea what they mean, mind you, but I know all the lyrics. So I'm sitting there like, yeah, Wu Tang Clan ain't nothing. To... <laughs> um, but uh, at a very young age, my mother actually encouraged me to sing and to actually learn how to do that kind of thing. And uh, I regret not pursuing it in like school and whatnot, but she did teach me a great deal about singing and a lot about rapping too. My mother actually had the opportunity to go into the music industry professionally. Uh, but she decided against it in favor of raising her four children. Um, and so I just, I learned all that from her. And so to this day, she still, uh, supports me with what I do and always gives me honest critique. And if I ever need an honest critique, I get it from her. That's for sure. So, uh, definitely my mother. Awesome. Ah, oh, so this one is from Bob. Bob, Bob O'Head 13. Uh, question is, what is your general reaction to the EQLA charity auction? Did any particular moment stand out for you? Ooh, uh, yes, yes, big time. Um, the really, first off, OHOD's $2,000 bid. Oh, yeah. Abs OHOD's $2,000 bid, and I think that's one that everybody is going to talk about and that is the one that everybody knows from eqla was oods two thousand dollar bid uh that went towards the uh i think it was andrea libman's uh run for cancer mm -hmm. yes yeah, that that charity oh that that was so, oh, that man. one yeah that one definitely stood out for me and then i believe um i think it was the nightmare moon poster that went for a thousand those three villain posters, I wanted so bad. Imagine having those three as a collection would be amazing. But bam, all three of them just kept skyrocketing in price. I'm like, oh, uh, there's no way I'm getting. <laughs> the Discord, the Discord poster that I actually got, I talked with the lady at the uh, the end of the auction, and I was just like, do you still want this poster? And she's just like, yeah. So I gave her. Um, I was just like, because I accidentally overestimated my finances on that, and it was either I get home or I get a poster. Mm -hmm. So I kind of went with I need to get home. So I ended up um, paying a bit of the difference for that poster. And then I also gave her, uh, Dusty, you know what I'm talking about, the pony badges that Mandy makes? Yep. I ended up giving her the entire new set. Ooh. Yeah. So that's like 12 something badges. It's like a $50 value. Yeah, so I was just like, here you go. And she's like, you sure? And I'm like, it's fine. Just take them. They're yours. Um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, those those two particular auction items, though, stood out to me. And I, I was actually really surprised that the Discord one did not go for more. Oh, yeah, I did, too. That one was really well done. Out of yeah. all of them, I liked that one the all, most. I really all did. All of them. All of them all were of them really were well, done. well done. Oh, no, having all, all three, that would be the best collection ever. But, no, they were way too high, way over my price range, so, yeah. um... But uh, so this one is from Chili. Uh, <laughs> question to Dusty: uh, When are you going to be visiting Ponyville again? Well, babe, you haven't actually gotten with me on the text. How do I know when you're available? <laughs> you know, I don't know when I don't know when Christmas break is for Ponyville Elementary. So you you don't tell me these things. So you got you got to get on me with text to tell me what your off time is over to, over to Hearts Warm Eve holidays. You see, once you tell me that, then I can figure it out with Equestria Innovations for my slot at the portal. You see, so that costs money. So I don't want to show up and then have you still in school when we can't go out for lunch. It you know I got to know these things. So and get teachers with me. have lunch breaks too. Come get on. with me. Get get with me on Twitter. Okay. Tell me what days you're off over the hearts warming holidays and we'll hook up. Okay. I'm 
I'm, you have no idea how hard I was resisting the urge during that little, uh, during that, just to go, wow. <laughs> if you could see what I was wearing, it would be very apro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I have an afro wig and aviators. Let's just get those on you right now. Dude, they're on. Oh, my God. Plus my gold chain. <laughs> What if we drove to? Come on! What? I can't have a little fun with my girlfriend? Come on. Maybe. Screwy! What? I didn't, I didn't do anything wrong. <gasps> Did I? <laughs> I don't even know if I do things wrong anymore. Oh, I'm just gonna change topics, and this this will definitely help out. Uh, this one is from Flutter Tree, and question for Mike: If you were a tree, what kind would you be, and why? Birch, birch tree, because birch trees are radical, and I have three of them in my front yard. He does. Oh, man, I've been there. That was a, that was quite. I really like. I really. Answer. I. You know what? I've been waiting for that question for a long. And you can long make time. you can make awesome canoes out of them. Uh, no, I'm just, seriously, birch trees. Yes. I can't stand redwoods, I can't stand evergreens, can't stand oak trees. Birch tree, all the way. Birch, there you go. That and my I Minecraft can't... house is constructed out of 90% birch wood, so. There you go. I'm a little bit biased. Uh. Love it. <laughs> little bit biased. Trees. You're making good to make Flutter Tree cry. Jeez, you're just killing all the trees. <laughs> hey, man, I plant, I plant them back. I recycle. Okay, that's good then. That's good then. That's good. Save, save the environment. Good on you. Go green. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So this one is from Paleo. Yeah. Paleo watching the show Paleo today. Paleo watching the show tonight. Yeah. Oh, so this question is, how can Mike be so involved in the fandom yet not watch the show? I see him on Tumblr all the time. He has time. Just let, just, just like no, marathon. No, I don't. No, I don't. 22 nope. minutes of each day for I a while. Not. No, no, no. I have time randomly scattered about in about two to three minute intervals. I <laughs> I do not have a clumped up uh, set of time, 22 minutes, that I can dedicate to watching the show. And he also don't. knows you watch other cartoons, Mike. <laughs> okay, okay. So, yeah, I took a day or two to watch Gravity Falls. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a great show. <laughs> I'm it not is a good show. It's not a great show. I'm just, it's Gravity Falls. Come on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, Gravity Falls is so good. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's that. so, so hey, funny. Hey, Gravity Falls has been on hiatus for almost as long as I have. Yeah, what is that? What's going on there? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just sitting at my computer. Come on, Gravity Falls. No. Ooh. Oh, my God. No, it's, it, it's a great show, though, and... Yeah, no, I, I do. I am going to set aside a day and I'm probably going to marathon stream all the episodes of My Little Pony that I've missed. So I will catch up. I will, I will catch up eventually. You got to eat sometime mm -hmm. while you're eating. Watch it. I forget to eat. No wonder you're a I twig. Throw, I go through <laughs> every day and I'm sitting here and I'm working and I start to get a headache and I'm like, oh, crap, did I eat today? Oh, I can't remember. Whatever, let's keep working. Oh, that's unhealthy, bro. That is I, very it's, unhealthy. I forget, okay? I forget to eat. It happens. I to, <laughs> I, and you know what's funny is when I finally do eat, I have a nice, I have a big, hearty meal. I'll go downstairs. I'll cook something on the grill. I'll have some soup. I'll make some toast or have some, like, garlic bread or something. I'll have a nice, hearty meal, and then I'll go to bed at 5 in the morning. You're making me hungry, bro. 5 in the morning. God. 5 in the morning. Got to be 20 years old again. 21, sir. Uh, same thing. No. I thought big, you were old, sir. Big <laughs> that one year is the determining factor in California about whether or not I can get intoxicated legally. That's true. <laughs> well, then come down to come, come here to Canada. Wait, you're 21. Never mind. <laughs> eh. Yeah. I'm already 21. I went to the UK a couple of years ago, though, and I did enjoy the, their uh, their pubs. Their pubs were fantastic. Mm, oh, that would be fun. Do it. Do it, do it, Philly. Uh, so this from is from Zyra, Pony Lover. Uh, question is, are you planning on, uh, for Mike, are you planning on making any new theme songs or additional songs that are for specific ponies you have done before, like Luna? Uh, 
Technically, yes. <laughs> Technically, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I uh, well, hold on. Let me check something really quick. I have the list in front of me. <gasps> no, no, uh, no. That one's already been done. No, no. Okay. Technically, yes. Uh, well, actually, the answer is just straight up yes. Um, I have two that I'm working on for my album right now. I have one for Apple Bloom, one for Sorin. Uh, one for the changelings in general. I'm finally going to be making an extended version of My Little Redneck, by the way, and I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I'm probably going to ask for your help on that one. I can do it. I'm All right, there. fantastic. All right, we're, we're going to make this happen. Yes. Um, but then uh, the entire album after that, there's going to be uh, one song for each of the main six. Well, actually, there's going to be five songs for the main six. I'm going to mash uh, two of them into one song, but that's literally all I'm telling you. Yeah, that, I'm. I'm just. I'm giving very, 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 uh, very light hints about it because, yeah, I. Uh, it's still in the baby stages. Yes, you get nothing else. Yep. No soup for you. No, no soup for you. <laughs> so this one is from Rapafoin. Hope I said your name right. Uh, question for Mike: Do you plan to do another dramatic reading sometime soon? I do. Yes, uh, dramatic readings is something that I do actually miss a great deal. But um, but yeah, I've been uh, I've again I've been focusing more on my music and kind of putting uh, YouTube as a hold of the wayside so I can get that work done. But once I actually get that work done, I do plan on doing more um, dramatic readings again. I'm also getting a uh, a voice reel together for fan built Lee Tokar's project that I do plan on submitting. Yeah, I, I have to get that done too. I've actually been for the last two days. I've been doing nothing but reading a fanfic aloud. So I can, yeah, I um, I've been nope. basically slurring my words, going too fast, or going too slow, or being monotonous. Or it's like, oh, where's the happy medium? Yeah, it's mm -hmm. just it's really just involving yourself. And I talked yes. with uh with Bree actually earlier today, and I'm like, you know, what what do I do for a sound? Because I've never done a a like an actual sound reel before, and she sent me hers, and I was like, oh oh okay, I, I got an idea of what I'm doing now. So. Uh, I'm probably going to do that over the course of the next couple of days in between uh, bouts of writing and recording. Cool. So You have to let me in on that. I need to know that, too. Yeah, I'll uh, I'll give you the information afterwards. It's actually really, really easy, um, but I'll I'll tell you about that later. 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 I can read these questions all right, but I can't read dramatic as good as you do. <laughs> Yes, and you see, he looked into the live stream chat, eyeing for which question he was going to ask next. <laughs> then his eyes fell upon it, fixated in an almost psychotic manner. <laughs> oh my god, that's amazing. <laughs> so this one is from uh, Gavin. Uh, question for Mike. Uh, how did you overcome yourself when you, were, when you were feeling like you couldn't continue? I took a step back. One of the things that I see a lot of people uh, doing, like everybody, here, first off, people deal with uh, the creation block differently. Some people power through it and then go back once the juices have started rolling again and flowing and they, uh, they get to work on it that way. Other people uh, take a break from it and come back to it when they're a little bit more refreshed. Me, I stop and think for a moment and I think about why I'm doing what it is I do. One of the biggest reasons I went on this hiatus was because I had stopped doing this stuff because I was having fun with it. I had started doing it uh, for the sake of trying to impress people, and I started doing it because I was trying to please everybody. And I needed to realize that you're not going to please everybody. No matter what you do, whether it's writing, drawing, music, what have you, you're never going to please everybody. Somebody is always going to dislike what you're going to do. And so I took that step back and I took a break. I decided to figure out, okay, why do I enjoy doing this? Why am I doing this in the first place? And I found that spark, that bit of inspiration that reminded me, this is why I do it. This is why I love doing this. And honestly, it didn't kick in completely until I debuted Rise Above at EQLA because I had been stressing so much. Oh God, are people going to like it? Is it going to be good? Da, 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 da. But it ended up, people ended up loving it. And so it's all about finding and remembering, especially why it is you do what you do. Don't do it because you want to impress. Don't do it because you want to get popular, because honestly, that's just going to blind you and it's going to make things a lot more difficult. 
do it because you find enjoyment in it, because it inspires you, because you love to do it, because that'll take you a hell of a lot farther than trying to do it to gain, you know, a few people's attention. Mm -hmm. And how many times have I said that on the show, people? Way how, how many too many. Way too many times. <laughs> Way too many times. Way too many times do you bring up that subject? <laughs> I don't know what else to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> it's straightforward. You do say too many times. <laughs> oh. On a river. So this one... <laughs> <laughs> oh god, you're killing me. <laughs> uh, so this one is from Dark Lord Lushkin? I hope I said that name right. Uh, oh, th this guy's smart. This guy is smart. He looked ahead in his calendars here, and he asked to Dusty and Screwball, is the Christmas Eve episode confirmed? Yes. <laughs> yes, it is. We are going to have a Christmas Eve spectacular right here on this program. Same bat time, same bat channel. And we're going to have things. Oh, you just reminded me of what I'm doing after this show. Thank you. Yes. Sorry, I'm watching a whole lot of DC animated Batman movies with Matt. <laughs> oh, so you're taking that out of the time of watching ponies. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. I got him! Woo! <laughs> no, but I did invite Matt over so we could do that. Yes. So, yes. Yes, I am choosing DC comic book heroes over punks. Yes. He is a DC... Sandra well would love you. Trans. As well you Dying should, Matt says. Down. Sandra would love you. Says so. Oh, he came... Matt came into my house with a giant stack of comics under his arms, and he's like, here, read this one. I'm like, oh, okay, dang. Dang. Cool. Um, as a comic book guy, I have to give props to that yeah he's letting me read uh the dark knight rises right now oh good and good then series. after that uh what is it the owl owls one? Get you and then owls. after that he's letting me read uh court of owls good that's a good series too yes get you into zakio jimbo mm -hmm. dark knight rises is coming out soon isn't it the movie yep yeah. yep tomorrow isn't it no no not tomorrow god <laughs> i can't i can't remember. i know it's this month what your language, sir. Fudge cakes. Thank you. There we go. Fiddlesticks. <laughs> Fiddlesticks. Birch trees. Don't want to have to start pulling out the buy some apples. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cowboy can get on that. <laughs> Next. Uh, so this one is from... Where did I put it? Oh, here we go. Uh, so this one's from Quid Pro Pro. Uh, question for Mike. Is there anyone you haven't collabed with that you'd like to? Alex. Mr. I mean, I talk with the dude frequently enough. I'm kind of hopeful that it'll happen eventually. Mm -hmm. um, no, but in all seriousness, um, I do want to work with Alex at some point, if anything, uh, as a learning experience. And just because he and I are ridiculously close. Um, I was working on a collab with Aviators that I unfortunately had to drop due to time restraints, which I'm a little bit upset about, but that's partly my own fault. Um, so if if time permits at some point, I probably would like to work with him. And um, as for people I haven't uh, worked with in the past, I'm trying to think of who else. Uh, EHT, Silverhound... And the only reason I'm not saying Odyssey Eurobeat is because we discussed this and our genres clash way too much for it to work. Mm -hmm. So yeah, those uh, probably those four. Alex, Aviators, EHT, and Silverhound. And Silverhound, sorry. Nice. No, I'm sorry. So this one, oh, don't be sad. It'll eventually come true. Maybe Dusty, all of them at once. Dusty, Dusty. They're already collabing. Oh, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. <laughs> Why are you solving? We're already collapsing. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, so this one is uh, Sean D'Amico. I hope I said that right. Uh, 
question for all. Did you read the new MLP comic book? And if so, what are your opinions on it? Actually, no, because mine no. is coming in the mail. I have not, because I'm reading Batman comics. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing all sorts of Batman here. What is I got, this? Uh, my, Spoiler, my... you guys, I'm hopping to the Batman Batman fandom. Here I go. Da -na 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 Batman. I know where you live. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> I know where you live. He does. He knows where I live, and I'm actually super scared of Dusty Drag when he Drag you back. Kicking and screaming, boy. <laughs> no! Yes. My secret identity will be ruined! Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> my god, you'll oh. be the Joker to my Bruce Wayne. Mm. <laughs> oh god, that is, that is beyond creepy. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually kind of refrains to this next question from Flutter Tree once again. Question is, have you had a creepy fan or event find you? A creepy what? Creepy fan. A creepy fan or a creepy event that has occurred to you? Yes, I've I've had uh I've had that happen before. It wasn't so much creepy so much as it was awkward. <laughs> uh, and it's mostly because it happened at work. Oh, yeah, those those it was when I was still working at the theater and uh, we weren't supposed to. But I did have on a, uh, a rainbow dash button at the time on my uniform and it blended in well enough with my other buttons that my boss didn't notice it. Thank God. But uh, somebody at the register actually asked me, they're like, oh, you're you're a brony. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I like the show. You know, I do music for it and whatnot. And they're just like, oh, you do music for it. Cool. What's your name? I'm like, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, when I told them, they kind of lost it. Freaked. They lost wow. it, yeah. yeah. And I'm kind of like, oh my god, I'm working, and my coworkers are giving me the weirdest look. Please stop. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I really don't want to have to explain this to them. I had I had a kid show up with his... I, we've had this story before on the show, but I had a, a, a kid show up with his dad to the motorcycle shop, to the, the Harley desk. And... He sort of looked at me while his, me and his dad were doing business, right? And I looked up a part for his dad. I said, okay, we can order this and all this kind of stuff. And and I gave him the part number and he said, okay, I'll come back tomorrow when I get paid, blah, blah, blah. And he started walking away. And his son sort of like went from my left, crossed to the front, looked at me really hard, put up his pointing finger. And he said, I know you. <laughs> I said, probably. <laughs> and he put his fingers to his mouth and he goes, Manly's growing the world. Like, Possibly. And he just freaked out. You know? <laughs> he was probably 19 years old, and, and, and he's just going, <gasps> and his dad comes up, and he goes, what? It's like, the, Manly, Bernie, the guy showed you a line, Manly's Bernie in the world. And he come, his dad came straight up to me and shook my hand. <laughs> came straight That's up awesome. to me and shook my hand. And he said, I, I want to pat you on the back for what you do. That's oh, awesome. Really? And oh yeah, it was a wonderful situation. You know, it was sort of like it was a very slow day, so it was sort of like I, I gave him like ten minutes of my time, and every, my boss was cool with it. Everybody at work knows what I do. Yeah. I've shown them just about everything, and they all thought think it's awesome. So it was cool. I, oh man, I think the event, well, a creepiest event that happened to me was actually when I just got back from EQLA. Uh, I told everyone that I was part of indeed a, a show. But I, I, I don't. I, I was, I was afraid of the people at work because honestly, it's a new job, and mm -hmm. I, I don't want to I come on as, as really different. And, and until I'm friends with them, then I'll tell them about it, about My Little Pony and all that sort. And, and so I go to uh, Los Angeles, and it turns out that my old supervisor got hired there, to where I work now. Ooh. So she told them about ponies while I was away. I come back to. Everyone, everyone asking me questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, I've, I've never been hit so hard by so many questions ever. I'm like, I, I don't know. It, it really threw me off. It really did. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Uh, next one, Scree. Uh, where, where is it? Uh, oh, here we go. So this one's for Mike and Dusty. Uh, what are, uh, from uh, Bismarck, question is, what are some of your favorite Brony songs that you weren't a part of? Most of them. <laughs> that's too simple. <laughs> um, that's too simple. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, one of my favorites from the early, early, early days is One Trick Pony. 
uh, that Mike did because it, it because of its statement because of what it said um, because it was basically Mike uh, and, and uh, Jack at the time basically telling people screw you you know we're gonna do what we do and you can come like it or not and I love the attitude and I love the it helped me at the time when I was going through a, a, a crisis of confidence about what I was doing and I said you know what F- it. I'm gonna do what I do, and if you all love it, come come play. If you don't, don't need you. Yeah. So uh, that, and uh, of course, uh, uh, Beyond Her Tomb, and uh, I've come to find a lot of my favorite songs go, you know, Mike or Denotive, um, and then some Alex S thrown in because I'm not really a big house guy. You know, I, I used yeah. to be. I used to I used to listen to the Jams and, and the KLF a lot when I was younger. And I like the house beat that these guys do. And if I'm calling Alex S. House and it's not house and he wants to kill me. It's yeah, dubstep. I'm, I'm sorry, dubstep. Uh, but, but dubstep is basically house cranked up to 11, if you yeah. want to call it that. But but house back in, I grew up when house became house. I mean, before the jams, before the KLF, there was no such thing. Yeah. So they pretty much, you know, created the genre. So, uh I'm a lot back into you know 3AM Eternal and all those kind of songs. So if 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 a if a dubstep or a house song sounds a lot like that, I love it. You know because that's where I came. That's where I came up from. Um, yeah. So and of course Bronafide, anything Bronafide does um, is just basically awesome. So um, I I want to col- collab with them more because we we really are on the same wavelength. So um, probably you know you're gonna go with that and aviators too so it's, i'm sorry it's just there's too many too many um honestly the song that got me into it like into everything was uh lulz's song stuck here on the moon which i still have a soft spot for oh yeah um just because that was the one that really got me into the music side of things and then i followed lulz's channel really admired the dude from afar still do today because he's just a wickedly talented guy and then um after that, I started branching out more. I got introduced to uh, Glaze's stuff. I got introduced to Alex's party with Pinky, which was a major staple in uh, pushing me to do music and actually, you know, get into the game, as it were. And then, um, yeah, that's... Uh, oh, one that I absolutely adore to this day still is uh, Never Ending Strife by Hate Seed. Oh, yeah. Love, oh. love, 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 love that song. Mm-hmm. And there, I mean, just as like as of late to like, I don't listen to uh, a lot of music mostly because I'm working and I feel like it distracts me, which is counterproductive because if I listen to more music, I'm actually more apt to to make more to, music. Yeah, because your brain craves it at that point. So I need to make it a habit. But like that is one song that I'll just pop on and I'll be like, let's get to work. Yep. Okay, screw it. We got time for one more question. Make it good. You know I've been keeping the good ones. Yep. Uh, this is from Burnt Mango. A question for Mike: Do you aspire? Uh, do you aspire to stay in one genre of music or work across all the styles? Honestly, I crave variation like you would not believe. One of my one of my issues with um, a lot of the music that I see uh, going around in the fandom is that a lot of it is centralized around EDM and dubstep. Oh, yeah. And not to say that that is a bad genre, but the biggest issue that I find is that there's a distinct lack of variation. And one thing that I crave more than anything else is I want to see more acoustic stuff. I want to people, I want to see people branch out into stuff that isn't just EDM, rock, or orchestral. I want to see a lot of variation. That's why I'm doing a country song right now. That's why I'm starting to look into maybe doing some jazz, hell, maybe even some ska music. Ska music actually is something that has not been touched on quite a bit. And I have a ska song written. I just need to compose the thing um but i mean there's just i crave variation yeah. and i mean i know i'm I, I can do rapping i can do singing but i want to i want to branch out i want to learn more about music as a whole and to limit myself to a single genre would be dumb and very counterproductive and to any aspiring or even uh current musicians that are trying to work their way up don't limit yourself don't limit yourself to a single genre or a single style. Branch out. Be be adventurous. Be bold. Be risky. Be don't be afraid to fail because yeah. everybody fails. Pros are just noobs who never quit. Mm-hmm. So if you can branch out, try something new. Try something outside your comfort zone, especially because when you try something outside your comfort zone, who knows? Maybe you're good at it. And if you're not, but you have the passion and the drive to get good at it, you're gonna go places with that. 
so seriously, branch out, diversify, and try a little bit of everything because mm -hmm. you'll be surprised at how learning something about, I mean, help. Most people don't know this, but a lot of rap has its roots set in country. Yes, it does. A lot of rap has its roots set in country music. I grew up listening to country music alongside rap because they were very similar. Mm -hmm. oh. so, so don't be afraid to to go outside what you're used to and listen to new things because you'll be surprised at how these genres bleed into each other and directly influence one another. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, really, just go for it. I mean, look, look at my look at my back catalog, people. I started off doing Billy Joel, and then I did uh, Kenny Rogers, and then I did a rap song, Kid Rock, and then I did, and the latest one I've done is Heavy Metal. So, it, and I love all these genres, and I will try all of them until I find uh, what fits me. And I've come to find out that I, I do more uh, I do more blues rock and, uh, and that type of uh, Frank Sinatra type style of song better than just about anything. So, but it, without putting my toe into all of those little pools, I wouldn't have found out you know what I was good at. You know, I would have been thinking, okay, well, maybe I should do this, but I won't because I don't think I'm very good at it. Well, now I know that I'm, I'm good at certain things, and now I can go in that direction. So, yeah. without you, you never know what you're good at until you go and take a swing. Until you step in the box and take a swing at the pitch, you'll never know where you can hit it. Exactly. So, get in the box. All you can do is give it a shot. So, with that, we are at the end of the program. So, uh, boo. I know, boo-boo. Boo-hoo, boo-hoo-hoo-hoo. So, um, the one thing yeah, I do want to, one thing I do want to bring up. Let's go for an extra half hour. You, oh, I don't know, Mike. Should we? Let's go. No, no, no. I didn't think so. Um, That's cutting into my Batman movie time. I know. <laughs> I know. Uh, real quick, uh, weekly call-out sheet of the shows uh, you can watch right here on Everfree Network. Uh, reading Rainbow Boom every other Tuesday. Uh, I'm now part of that crew, so we're working on new stuff. Uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern, every other Tuesday. QDR Crusaders is Tuesdays, excuse me, 6 p.m. Uh, Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. Equestrian Choir with Joe Stevens, Tech Rat, Mason, and LTT. Look at Moose! And that is Wednesdays, uh, 5 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Eastern. And then Into the Spotlight, which is the new show with Osaka Jack, uh, where he gives the some bronies who haven't had the spotlight that really should get some. Uh, that will be Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. Eastern. Sketchy Sounds Live Songcast, two-hour live acoustic music with Sketchy Thursdays, 11 Eastern to Pacific. Brony a Breakdown, Wednesdays with Saber Spark and that man Paleo, who was in the chat today, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific. Lunar Republic a Takeover with Nightmare Moon, who still hasn't apologized to me. Fridays, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. That's where she takes over this entire radio station and plays the music you want to hear. Saturday Night guess Songs. What? Guess what, Apology, you are not going to get. Yeah, probably. Uh, Saturday Night Songs with Michelle Kreber. Saturdays, Michelle will talk to you about anything she's got going on. Last night, this guy was on the program. Not me, that guy. Yeah, and, yeah uh, buddy. Yeah, buddy. Saturdays, 4 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific, when she eats all her peas. Uh, One Tricks Mixology is after that, and that's Saturday Night's. 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. That's the Trance Electro and House Show with One Trick. And then Pega Sisters Live is Sundays. 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific with the two lovely ladies who want to give you the female perspective of this fandom that we got going on. And with that, we are through. Now, what I want to do and what I want to remind you of is next week's show is going to be the finals of the Studley Stallion stash off. So we're going to have King Harold back one more time, and he's going to have all the mustaches, and we're going to have all the judging, and we're going to have special guests here on the program that you're not going to want to miss. So more details will come during the week, so be ready, and be you're going to want to be here. You're going to want to be here for this because it's going to be awesome. Uh, so I just wanted to let you know that, and you know what? Sweetie Belle, Scootaloo, and Apple Bloom are already growing their mustaches out, as you can see here, and they're ready. Are you ready? Because I'm ready. And with that, I want to thank Mr. Mike the Microphone for coming on at the very last minute. And I'm talking about the very last minute. 
Oh, it wasn't the last minute. It was it was a couple hours. Ago. Uh, true, but you know, it's it's just one of those things where it was. You had other things. You had Batman. You had Batman to watch. But... Okay, you know, you know, you know what, yeah. you know what, it's fine. Okay, Batman. This takes precedence. You see, I don't always put Batman before ponies. See, I put ponies before Batman in this situation. If you put Batman before me, I would come hurt you. If I put Batman before you, Dusty, you'd probably dress up as Batman and beat the living daylights out of me. Uh, no, I would just, I would find some way to hurt you. <laughs> Dusty, you'd reach through the internet. Reach and through the internet. Exactly. Yes. But uh, I want to thank you again for, for showing up and uh, and giving us a hand. Uh, I mean, you really didn't have to, and I thank you very much. Um, thanks, Screwy, for taking care of all the people in the chat room. And Cowboy Dave, who's going to make us look lovely on the YouTubes later when he gets this all cut so together. So, with that, don't forget, next week's show is going to be huge, so have your ear to the grindstone and be listening for the details, because we'll have them by midweek. All right? And thank you all for coming, and we will catch you next week. Bye-bye. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. We hate to leave you, but we'll be back soon. Good night, sweetheart. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Good night.